All right, so I found an interesting article on TechCrunch about the site Reliability Engineer. So I thought I'd go through it, ask some questions for my students to answer. They begin by saying that it's no secret that data scientist is one of the hottest job titles going. DJ Patel famously proclaimed data scientist the sexiest job of the 21st century. Who is DJ Patel? Whoever it is, they said this before moving to join the White House as the first chief data scientist of the U.S. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Who is DJ Patel? They're the first chief data scientist. Didn't know we had chief data scientists in our country. Wants a rarefied in-house role at a few leading internet companies such as LinkedIn and PayPal, data science has since grown into a global phenomenon, impacting organizations of all sizes across many industries. More recently, a buzzy new job title has emerged from the same group of companies, that of Site Reliability Engineer. And then they finish the paragraph by saying, like, will the Site Reliability Engineer follow the same path as this data scientist? So a good inference question, I'm going to ask which companies are buzzing about SREs. The answer is like LinkedIn, PayPal. But anyways, here is our first section, the new IT stack. Over the last 15 years, the largest internet properties have quietly led a revolution in IT technology. The reason is simple. Traditional corporate data center techniques simply would not efficiently scale up to the level that is required to run a global service like Google or Facebook. Okay, so scalability is the issue here. Why did they capitalize this word? Well, I think the point of this paragraph, though, is well said in the last sentence. Instead, these companies have had to innovate at all layers of the technology stack, from hardware to networking to applications. So what three levels of the IT stack have companies needed to innovate? And the answer is hardware, networking, applications. Being innovative is hard enough, period, not to mention being innovated in these three levels, all of which take expertise in each of them to really understand. Well, the article goes on to say in many cases, the resulting building blocks have been released as open source software packages or have inspired third parties to create their own versions. I like that they call this um, building blocks. Open source packages is, yes, such huge building blocks for people. And in terms of these building blocks, examples of them are numerous, one of which is containers, Google's widespread internal adoption of lightweight OS containers inspired the rapidly growing movement around Docker, driving the company at the center of this phenomenon to $162 million in funding and prompting the creation of industry-wide collaborations like the Open Container Project. So the question is, what is the Open Container Project? This is a widespread collaboration around the creation of lightweight OS containers. For you out there listening to this, I think it's a good thing to remember that a container is more like an operating system and a VM is more like an actual computer. For me, that's been the difference between um, regular virtual machines and then um, the use of this term containers. Well, in terms of cluster management, Google's internal Borg project similarly inspired two fast-growing open-source communities around the Kubernetes and Mesos cluster resource management framework. So what are Kubernetes and Mesos? These are cluster resource management frameworks. And then I'm going to ask you to tell me more about the Borg project. You could simply say it's an internal project of Google's that eventually led to Kubernetes and Mesos. Or you could do your own research. I plan on doing it myself. But what a cool name for a project, especially if you're a Star Trek fan. The next building block here is analytics. So Google's data processing innovations inspired Yahoo's early investments into Hadoop, which has in turn spawned a whole ecosystem of modern big data technologies and commercial players, including Cloudera and uh, Hortonworks. So I'm simply going to ask, what does Hadoop relate to? And you can say analytics. Our last building block is in microservices. So Amazon and Netflix were early innovators and evangelists in the practice of designing software applications as suites of independently deployable services, an approach that is also being widely adopted in the industry in the form of products like Lightbin's Reactive Platform, formerly TypeSafe. 
The unifying theme of these technologies is higher efficiency and lower costs at large scale, but source code won't solve these challenges in isolation. It must be complemented by new management techniques, methodologies, and tools. In other words, the big picture needs to consider people and processes as it does software. For my particular skill set, I should repeat that often in job interviews. So how about this for a question? What must innovation in the IT stack work with? And the answer is it must work with people and processes as much as everything else. So in terms of these people and processes, that's what the um, inspiration for an SRE is, apparently. Ben Traynor, who joined Google as a site reliability czar in 2003, has described SRE as what happens when a software engineer is tasked with what used to be called operations. Over the last decade, the team that Traynor started at Google has grown into a handful of production engineers to more than 1,000 SREs. How's this question sound? What's the name of the area SREs used to be in? Answer, operations. What led me to this article in the first place was my question of what's the difference between a what, between sorry DevOps and SREs. A little later in this uh, paragraph, though, he's talking about production engineers, so maybe you can put that with your answer. So there are these people who started out as production engineers, and they have moved into being SREs. It looks like we get some examples over here. It says, moreover, the SRE concept has been embraced by other major internet companies, Dropbox, Airbnb, Netflix. The sentence should just say, the site indeed now lists hundreds of SRE positions. And the SRE community now even has its own conference, dubbed SRECon. So after this video, we should figure out if there are talks on YouTube from SRECon. Now, Andrew Whittleson, an SRE at Google, relates the discipline to competitive auto sports. Our work is like being a part of the world's most intense pit crew. We change the tires of a race car as it's going 100 miles per hour. As any competitive racing fan knows, a faster engine and chassis doesn't mean much without a world-class pit crew, equipped with the right tools, techniques, and strategies to keep it in the lead. In Formula One racing, the days of winning races based on gut instinct are waning, and today's winning teams are differentiated by real-time streaming data analytics as much as they are by pistons and tires. And I guess I'm not too big a fan of that analogy, but it sure reminded me of this movie that is coming out or came out this week that I really want to see. Personally, not a racing fan, though I love Forza. I don't know if Formula One is related to that movie at all. Let's talk about SRE in a box. It's all well and good to be inspired by the large internet companies, but how do we integrate the SRE discipline into existing enterprise IT teams? Just like Cloudera, packaged the early tribal knowledge around data engineering and turned it into turnkey products accessible to a mass IT audience, a new batch of companies is packaging the principles of SRE for the masses. Recently introduced, Rokana Ops is an example. The author of the article apparently is an investor in Rokana. So they must have done their research. They say that Rokana gives administrators visibility into the inner workings of their data centers and applications, just as Blue Bloomberg Terminal enables brokers to monitor and investigate activity across markets. Rokana Ops uses big data techniques combined with data visualization to guide IT operators to the root cause of any issue in their complex IT infrastructure. So I'm wondering if Rokana is like a company of SREs? Up here he said it's an example of a company that is packaging the principles of SRE for the masses. So yeah, we're talking about data visualization down here now. So no wonder the article is titled something about is the SRE the new data scientist? So how about I ask the question, what is the goal for some of these SRE principles? I suppose the goal is to create a better data visualization to guide IT operators. Well, he finishes about Rokana by saying that to power their IT operations, other companies are going to Rokana to gain those capabilities of the site reliability engineer discipline. So yeah, Rokana Ops sounds like a company of SREs. Okay, so with 11 questions, though, that should be enough for this video. This could be just kind of an introduction to um, what an SRE is. 
And you know, the article isn't much longer for me to go and create another video on it. So be on the lookout for this next one I want to do. Some people from Google wrote an entire book on SREs that I plan on reading through here on the channel.